Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to introduce you to Geometry Shaders in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. With Geometry Shaders, you can create or destroy meshes and perform effects on triangles, all from the GPU. It might not seem like much, but you can do some truly magical effects with them. You cannot write geometry shaders in the shader graph, so if you've only made graphs before, this video will walk you through writing a shader in code. I made this project in Unity 2020.1.9 F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 8.2.0. In this video, I'll make a shader that transforms each triangle of a mesh into a three-dimensional pyramid. To get started, enable the Universal Render Pipeline by downloading the package, creating a settings asset, and enabling it in your project. Also set up a simple test scene and grab a texture. The main difference between a graph shader and a code shader is that in code, you have to separate your logic into a chain of several different functions, each running at different times, and then figure out how to pass data between them. For instance, all shaders have a vertex function, which runs once on each vertex of the mesh, and a fragment function, which runs once on each pixel displaying the mesh. Most of the logic you created in a graph would run in the fragment function. But if your lighting algorithm needs a world position and normal, you would first request this data in the vertex function. It would receive it in object space, transform it to world space, and then save it in a data structure for the fragment function to use later. Okay, so we'd have data for each vertex, but how does the renderer generate data for pixels between the vertices? If you think of each pixel as lying on a triangle, the value for any pixel can be generated by interpolating between the corner vertices. That's exactly what the renderer does for us automatically using a built-in system called the interpolator. Okay, so that's the theory. Let's get started by creating an unlit shader file called pyramidfaces.shader. This file will contain metadata, and another file called pyramidfaces.hlsl will contain the actual logic. You have to create that file in your operating system. While you're there, grab the NMG Geometry Helpers.hlsl file from the video description. It contains some helper functions that I'll make use of. Open your .shader file. At the top, change the shader's name to custom slash pyramid faces. This is the folder and name which appears in the materials shader picker dialog. Below that is a properties block. This is where you put properties in a code shader. The main texture entry is already there, but add this float property called pyramid height. A subshader block can be used to generate several shaders for different hardware, but we'll ignore that for now. In the tags block, add this to tell Unity the shader is compatible with the URP. A pass block defines a render pass. Shaders usually have at least two passes, one for the forward lit phase, which renders lighting and color, and another for the shadow caster phase, which renders shadow maps. For this lit pass, delete the boilerplate code inside, and then tag it as a lit pass. These hash pragma lines define a bunch of metadata. First, we need to tell Unity which dependencies this shader requires, and register some shadow and lighting keywords. Next is where we register our shader functions. Unity will look for matching functions in the .hlsl file, which we tell it to include here. Alright, so open the hlsl file. This line makes sure the file is not accidentally compiled twice, and this line includes our helper functions. Next come the data structures. This attribute struct is the input to the vertex function, so request data that you need here. We need the position, normal, tangent, and UV. To request a value, you have to tag variables with these words called semantics. Unity will fill in the appropriate data automatically when it passes the structure to the vertex function. The vertex output struct is what the renderer interpolates and gives to the fragment function. Even here, where all values are set by the vertex function, we have to tag each field with a semantic so the renderer knows how to store them. You can stuff them all into these UV registers called TextCord012. Note the SV underscore position semantic must tag a vertex's position in clip space. Below that, we define variables corresponding to properties. This is mostly busy work, but it's required so code can access these properties. Make sure the names match the properties in the .shader file. Textures are special, and properties actually generate three different variables for them. One for the texture, the sampler, and the scale and offset data. Note the naming pattern. Finally, here is our vertex function. It takes in an attribute struct and outputs a vertex output struct. Use these URP functions to convert from object space to world and clip space. 
this transform text macro applies a texture scale and offset to the UV. Here is our fragment function. It takes in a vertex output struct and outputs a color. The SV target semantic tells the renderer to store the return value as the pixel's color. I need to initialize this lighting input struct and sample the main texture. Then I send all that data to the URP simple lit lighting function, which deals with lights, shadows, attenuation, etc. Back in Unity, create a material to use your new shader. This part should feel familiar. The mesh won't look too exciting yet, but we're just laying the groundwork. Okay, so I told you I'd teach you about geometry shaders. A geometry shader is just a shader with an optional third type of function that runs in between the vertex and fragment functions. The geometry function executes once per triangle in the mesh. It receives the vertex function's output for each triangle corner. Crucially, geometry functions can output a variable number of vertices arranged into triangles, allowing them to create, change, or remove triangles from the mesh. In the dot shader file, add another pragma line to register a geometry function. In the HLSL file, we need to rearrange some data in our structs. Create a new geometry output struct and give it the old vertex output fields. Now, the attributes and vertex output structs only need to contain position and UV. Simplify the vertex function to reflect this. The geometry function's signature looks a little intimidating, but really, it just takes in three vertex output structs corresponding to a triangle on the mesh. It also receives an output stream, which we'll fill with the vertex and triangle data to create. Note that by default, if you add nothing to this stream, the renderer will render nothing. It will treat it as if the geometry function had destroyed all triangles. Finally, this max vertex count attribute tells the renderer the maximum number of vertices we will ever output. It's okay to output fewer, just not more. We'll create three triangles here, so nine is perfect. I want to find the center position of the output triangle, as well as the triangle's normal. With that data, I can create a new center vertex and extrude it along the normal vector constructing a pyramid. While I'm at it, I'll also find the UV for the new center point. This helper function will output one triangle containing the past three points. Let's look at it up here. This restart strip function tells the renderer that the next three vertices I output should make up a new triangle. Otherwise, vertices might connect in ways I don't want here. Each vertex in the new triangle should share a normal, so calculate that. This append function adds a vertex to the output stream but not before setup vertex creates an output struct for it. Don't forget to change the fragment function to receive a geometry output struct. This will cause the geometry output struct to be interpolated and then sent to the fragment function. Now, back in Unity, we have the pyramids. That's the power of geometry shaders. You could even animate this, setting up very efficient mesh deformation effects. Before I go, I want to add a shadow caster pass so this mesh will cast shadows. In the dot shader file, duplicate the lit pass and change the tag to shadow caster. Remove the keyword pragmas and replace them with this one. Finally, define a shadow caster pass keyword, allowing our logic to slightly adjust when rendering a shadow map. Most of the shadow caster's logic is contained in the NMG geometry helpers file. We just need to change this one line. It calculates a vertex's clip space position, which is a little different when casting shadows, since Unity does some magic to try to avoid artifacts. In the fragment function, use a hash if block to immediately return zero if we're in the shadow caster pass. There's no reason to calculate color here. And there you have it, a functional geometry shader written in code. The shader graph is very powerful, but there are still some things you can't create in it, and I hope this video will help you to not shy away from them. In the coming weeks, I'll show you some practical uses of geometry shaders, specifically in creating grass. Please subscribe and accept notifications so you don't miss the videos. Thank you so much. I'd also really appreciate it if you could leave a like. It lets YouTube know to recommend this video to others, and it really helps the channel. And of course, don't hesitate to comment if you have any questions. Do you have any ideas to use geometry shaders? Would you like to see me cover a certain topic in another video? Thanks so much for watching and make games.